There's times when Mayor, Mayor Savage and myself do, do not see eye to eye. And any president of a local branch knows that, that you don't always agree with the mayor. And you don't always agree with the police chief. And you don't always agree with some other people in power positions. But I want to say something about Mayor Savage. Every time I get an opportunity to say this, I'm going to say it. And I want to say to her face to face that I feel that she is the only mayor that the city of Tulsa has ever had that has opened her doors to the NAACP to talk to us the way she has. And I think we ought to give her a hand. So without any further ado, let me bring up right now Mayor Susan Savage. And I want you to give her a great round of applause. very gracious, very nice, very warm. And he's right. I mean, Jack, if you know Jack, he's an outspoken, opinionated individual, and I'm an outspoken, opinionated individual, so we often have some very lively discussions, but the nice part about those discussions is that we can generally find a middle ground on which we, which we agree. I'm very honored to be here tonight, and, and Carmen and Rebecca, I'm really, you are a tough act to follow, and I I'm really glad I don't have to sing, but I have only heard Vince Gill sing that song, and you all challenge him greatly on that. It was beautiful. Welcome, Mr. Starr, Mr. Allen, of course, um, Jack, for being here this evening, for bringing this important discussion and conference to our city. We're very honored, and Senator Horner and Representative Ross, it's always a pleasure to join the platform with the two of you, whom I believe to be among the best leaders that this community has an opportunity to experience and to share and to benefit from, from your wisdom and your, your energy. And to our neighbors from Arkansas, Louisiana, New Mexico, and Texas, we're very glad you have chosen to come to our city. We're going to work on the weather. Usually this time of year it can be warm, but today it's cold. At any rate, we hope that uh, the coolness of the weather doesn't in any way overshadow the warmth that we feel for your presence. I want to tell you a few facts about the city you are visiting. Tulsa is a city that was built on diversity. It was first settled during the 1830s by the Creek Indians. It covers 192 square miles with a population of 375,000 people. It has the most inland water port of any city in the United States. It has an international airport, a rail transport system, roads, of course, that link us from Canada to uh, Mexico. We have a minority population comprised of African American, Hispanic, Asian, Native American. Almost 25% of our population now is minority, which is very different than it was 10 to 15 years ago. The economy since the 1980s, when we were, as many of you from your respective states, were devastated by the downturn in the oil industry, Tulsa has worked very, very hard to diversify its economy. We're a leader in the telecommunications field, not only for the state of Oklahoma, but nationwide. Aerospace, manufacturing, our interests that you will find in this community. And we are a community that is driven, its economy is driven by small businesses, and it represents the entrepreneurial spirit that we have here. Our unemployment rate is well behind, well below the national average and the state average. We have turned our economy into a very vibrant, healthy place with a lot of opportunity. We have superb theater. I hope uh, if you are here, you will have maybe an opportunity to uh, go to the Phantom of the Opera, which is making a six-week run here in our city, the only city of Tulsa's size where the Phantom of the Opera has chosen to go. We have world-class museums. Our Gilcrease Museum is a, is a public museum. It's a city-owned museum with a nationally acclaimed collection of, of Western art. We have a regional ballet. A zoo, which is our single largest attraction in this community, a Philharmonic Orchestra, an Opera Festival, a Jazz Hall of Fame, thanks to Senator Horner, and a beautiful, beautiful new addition to our Greenwood Cultural Center. Our religious community is very broad-based. 
very inclusive with a network of churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples. And oftentimes we find ourselves as community leaders turning to our religious community here for support on a wide range of social issues that may be of interest to our community. We work through organizations such as the NAACP to promote tolerance and diversity. Because in 1921, a very important fact about life in our city, 75 years ago, Tulsa was the scene of one of America's most devastating race riots in what was known as the Greenwood District. At that time, during those, I guess that one day, the National Guard was called in to control white gangs who marched on Black North Tulsa shooting, looting, and burning. A newspaper account described the devastation as, and I quote, the ruins of a town hit simultaneously by fire and tornado. It was devastating. So as Tulsa reaches the eve of its 100th birthday as a city, and that will occur in 1998, it's a time of reflection for us as a community and a time to project about what kind of future we will be and what kind of future we will have and what kind of city we will be as we move into the 21st century. Our challenges are like any major urban area. Education, you see many of us with no on State Question 669. It is a very, very, it's a Proposition 13 type of question for us here in our state. And it will limit education, it will limit the growth of our libraries, it will limit economic development. And it is my hope on Tuesday, on Super Tuesday, when we have the vote, that we will stop it dead in its tracks. We have challenges in our public schools that members of the state legislature are seeking to address and that we are trying to address here locally. Our summer jobs program that, programs that employ nearly 2,000 youth trying to keep them, teaching them basic skills and keeping them employed through the summer are threatened by cuts in federal funding. Yet we are working with local business, businesses here to try to pick up those dollars that we are losing so we can find jobs for our kids, keep them away from drugs, keep them away from alcohol. We have a juvenile task force that we're pulling together, a broad-based consortium, to try to address in some more innovative ways problems with our youth. We must continue to develop the leadership, the community leadership, to address current problems and to develop our young people to be our future leaders. So the theme that you have presented to us in our city, developing youth, technology, and economic empowerment are all issues that this community is struggling to address, challenges that we know we need to meet. But I believe Tulsa is up to the task as we meet our challenges, everything from the insidious dilution of what Many of you have fought hard to win in the way of individual and civil rights. I believe there is a, a real insidious dilution of that occurring at the federal level that we have to stand up and say we will not tolerate. It is important as part of our effort that we continue to work to raise a standard of living for our citizens. So you are important to that effort. And we believe that the contributions you make along those lines will continue to make Tulsa a better place for us to live and for our families to work and to raise their children. Thank you very much for the work that you do and for inviting me to share some of my evening with you. Thank you.